After moving to the south of China for three hot summer months, I made a quick trip back home. I was born and raised in Shenyang, in the northeast of China. But since I left for college ten years ago, I've only been able to see my family once or twice a year. Every time I come back, my grandma. Nai Nai waits by the window. She shows me her paintings with so much pride and joy. This is nai hua de shao xi. Okay. Shows off her outfits. She always gives me the most random gifts, like socks this time because she thought my ones are too old. This is Nai Nai. I grew up with my grandparents. La 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 yeah. Whenever I see them, I'm greeted by ni pang la or ni shou la, and then showered with love and endless food. My parents never told them I quit my job. In their mind, I'm still the model granddaughter who lives in Beijing, or the little toddler that plucked out all my grandpa's plants. I don't know. Maybe I'm always a child in their eyes because I've never experienced life in Shenyang as an adult. But today, we're gonna change that together. Good morning, guys. Today we are in Shenyang. Kind of unexpected because I decided to come home last minute for my dad's birthday. He was very happy. I've spent some time with my family over the past couple of days, so today I thought we'd spend the day together, hang out at my favorite cafes and bookshops, and while、well, I'm in my hometown, chat about how my Family's been dealing with me quitting corporate, which quite a few of you guys have asked about. I'm also trying to get some work done while traveling. Oh, this used to be an old sewing machine. <laughs> so I made a short last night, and I'm trying to post it on Instagram. I always make my own covers for reels. I don't know if it matters. I was supposed to post a Q and A video last night, but it's so hard for me to talk in front of the camera. I've tried to film it three times now. It's still not done. As more and more of you guys start to discover this channel. It gives me a huge amount of anxiety if I don't post after a while. So I'm just trying to put at least something out there for you. Seriously, every single time I see a comment from you saying, "Oh, you look really natural in front of the camera," I'm like, "You have no idea. I'm an INFP. It gives me so much anxiety." Sometimes my own hometown surprises me by how cool it actually is. Like I had no idea this stuff existed when I was growing up. I left my notebook at home.、I、need to go to a stationery store to buy a notebook. There's a really cute one nearby. I swear I'm not just looking for an excuse to go. This is a brand of sexism I grew up with. <sighs> So this is an art book and zine shop called Kaleidoscope Books, Wanhua Tong Shu Dian. I found out about it last year, I think, and it's kind of crazy because I didn't discover the world of indie art and DIY culture until a couple of years ago when I was living in Beijing. And turns out it's been here all along in my hometown. When I came here last time, I saw a print by Yunqi. Room and I wanted to get it, but decided not to at the time. And I've been thinking about it since. So I actually came here today specifically to get that print. I think it's gone.
stuff I got from the bookshop and the stationery store. I got a couple of bookmarks. How have my parents been dealing with me quitting corporate? I briefly mentioned in the Q&A video that they are definitely scared, but they've never once told me you can't do it. And there's a lot to unpack from that. I have actually never told them that I quit my job. They had found out because I have posted some vlogs on a Chinese platform called Billy Billy, and a family friend shared the link with them, despite me telling them to please not do that. And so that's why I stopped posting on Billy Billy. I don't really talk to my parents about anything of importance that goes on in my life because every time we have a serious conversation, I feel like they just pick me apart. When they confronted me about quitting my job to do YouTube full time, it's like they knew exactly what I'm scared of the most. They asked, how many subscribers do you have? Do you know how to grow YouTube? What if it doesn't work out? The economy is not doing so well. What if you can't find another job? I feel like they are terrified of these questions themselves and they throw them at me to look for comfort in my answers but I don't have answers for them or for myself so then I just bluff and like pretend that I have everything figured out and then go home and take several days to uh, build up the confidence destroyed by them and this just repeats for every major life event which is why I haven't come home quite as often but as I get older I try to come home more and spend more time with my family this is actually the fourth time I've come back to Shenyang this year because I see see them trying to see the world the way I see it. They haven't had my experience living abroad, even though they have made a lot of sacrifices to pay for mine. And they grew up in a very different time. So I want to give them more credit give them more time. I think I'm really lucky to have grown up in a household where I've never doubted for a second that I'm very, very loved. But relationships are complicated and it can be tough even when everybody involved loves each other deeply. This would have been a great segment for a BetterHelp sponsorship, but I have recently been reading a lot of books about relationships with families and that has brought me a lot of comfort. It feels good to have finally said that out loud. Also, I'm starving. Let's go find food. There's actually a K-Town in Shenyang. Growing up, I've always had Korean classmates in my homeroom. There's also a Korean ethnicity in China, so I've had childhood friends from Korean families. They would have the best lunch boxes packed by their moms. Like I used to be so jealous of their lunches, but my mom packed good lunches too. <laughs> Thanks mom. You guys are asking how's my relationship with my mom? Thank you for caring and oh boy, don't I have a story for you. So I've told you guys, my mom still tries to sneak meat into my food, even after I've been vegetarian for three and a half years now. And this time when I got home, she spent all day making me this pickle. On my dad's birthday, before I started eating, I was like, mom, there's no meat in this, right? She'll look at me and she's like, no. And so I started digging in. A few minutes later, I bit on a piece of pig skin. I was like, mom, did this fall in by accident or did you put it in there? She was like, I didn't put meat in the dish. When I was a child, it always hurt so bad whenever I found out that my parents had lied to me. And it doesn't get better when you're an adult. I honestly don't know if there is a right way to deal with this. But I think by now I have grown enough to know that my feelings are valid and it's not automatically my fault just because she is my mother. So actually, for the first time ever, I confronted her about how hurt I was 
that she lied to me and that she had zero respect for my wishes. She said she shouldn't have imposed her wishes on other people and never apologized. So that's how my relationship with my mom is going for those of you who are still curious. I just had some kimbap for breakfast. <sighs> so I rented out a boat. There are way too many people staring and like I feel too self-conscious to film the Q&A. Also, this is really nice. Guys, we're gonna have a lovely time. Do I have the faintest idea how to drive a boat? I think this is the button to turn it on. Okay. Yes. Okay, I'm putting you on the back seat. Enjoy the ride. middle school I used to go to the bookstore whenever I was sad and it would make me feel so much better post post was that bookstore for adult Evelyn in Beijing but this time it actually made me feel a little sad because Beijing still feels like home and nothing feels worse than feeling like a guest in your own home I think I'm going to end this vlog here. Xinyang and Beijing are both places that I will forever consider my home. I feel like having lived in so many different cities is a blessing and a curse in that you have so many places that you would consider home, but at the end of the day, it becomes difficult to feel like you really belong somewhere. On a happier note, there is a cat. I will see you guys next time. Take care, bye. Anything is Possible is about Lucy Barron, a successful writer in New York, returning to her childhood home to uncover wounds in her family. I really love how Elizabeth Strout writes about nuanced emotions in complicated relationships, but it does weigh a bit heavy on my heart. I actually impulse bought all four books in the MGASH series. I think if you're dealing with unresolved emotions or difficult relationships, you might be able to find some comfort in this series. These four stories are connected but independent. I I finished the first two books and then went on to read other books so I'm not sure when I'll get back to the last two which are about Lucy Barton and her ex-husband William. If you've also read the MGASH series let me know your thoughts in the comments. <laughs> Bye for real this time. <laughs>